delayed. And probably we're probably <laughs> already live, but until it until it pops up in Twitch. Right, we are streaming now because I can see it in Twitch. So that means I can say hello. Hello out there. It's Monday night. It's 8.30 p.m. It's Let's Kill Twitter, the Sorbet edition. The Sorbet edition is half an hour of catching up on the week's tweets. And it's in between our main shows. So our next main show is next Sunday, the 11th of April at 8 p.m. And that will be with comedians Alex Keeley and Anna Morris. So please do go to Eventbrite and book that up because that means you can come into the Zoom room with us and share tweets and uh, make, generally make a nuisance of yourself. No, not really, but ask questions and stuff like that. But this is our half an hour little space to detox your timeline with the art of conversation. And as ever, I'll be doing that with my co-host, Sajila Kershey. Hello, Sajila, and happy Easter. <clears throat> Hello to you too, Julian, and world out there. Happy Easter, everybody, Little lots of bunnies. Um, and I'm really disappointed. I was, I, I, you know the Christmas present thing where you wait till after Christmas to get cheap presents? And I thought, with lockdown and everything, we're going to be able to see like a family, so I'm seeing my nieces. I'm going to wait till after Easter and then get cheap Easter eggs. Not one Easter egg anywhere. It's, it's, it's only Easter Monday. Egg. Give them chance. I was like, no, no, but it's Monday. But where I've, I've been shopping. I've been shopping today. It's bank holiday. Yesterday was Easter. I, uh, uh, I saw friends yesterday. Couldn't find anywhere yesterday. And none in Sainsbury's, none in Morrison's. Where are the Easter eggs? They're supposed to be reduced. This is what I was waiting for. Oh my God, it's a national crazy. scandal. We might need I an know. inquiry. We'll come on to inquiries later. <laughs> I've, got to say, I've got to say that <laughs> two things have shocked me about Easter. One was the very fact it was at Easter. I woke up on Good Friday and I, do, I remember thinking, it seems really quiet today and it seems really quiet, not just for a Friday, but for a Friday in lockdown. Oh, it must be Good Friday. I, literally, it just totally passed me by. And then I thought, oh, I might get less emails today and I might get some things done. So that was a nice surprise for me. Um, and also uh, Easter Sunday, going to the shop and none of the shops being open. And, and I'm sure that's happened other years. It just was just like really mm. weird. I'd not, I must have gone shopping on other days around Easter in previous years. But I suddenly thought, oh, but, but I like shopping during lockdown. Whatever will I do? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a bit spaced. <clears throat> I'm a bit spaced out. I've had one day less of my recommended daily intake of Waitrose, so what am I going to do? <laughs> and also, I know you love your chocolate, Julian, so I don't know. It must have been quite traumatic, actually. On Easter weekend, you can't get out to get your chocolate fix. I've got to say, uh, my chocolate fix is pretty daily, and I have a, uh, a stock of my favourite chocolate. I realise that I'm not going to advertise it now, otherwise I'm going to have to tick the box on YouTube saying product placement. <laughs> But you could be you could be sure that the bars of uh, of said chocolate will are uh, well stocked in my fridge. So Easter again, it just it sort of means nothing to me. It's all in bar form for me. I don't I don't know I don't know about this egg thing. Uh, sorry, I just I'm just really poo pooed Easter and also poo poo to to uh, April Fool's Day as well. And we'll have a little mini rant about that before we get started. Which is why in the world, at least since 2016, <clears throat> would we need April Fool's Day? Because literally. Every headline is an April Fool. Not yeah, a controversial I, I would, opinion. <laughs> I, I agree. I, I don't think I could tell what was the real and what was actually April Fool's. And every time I kept questioning, I say, is this an April Fool's? Is this an April Fool's? You're right. Um, why do we need it during lockdown? It's, well, it's um, ridiculous. But that, I mean, I would argue since 2016, since sort of Brexit and Trump and then, you know, various stories since, um, you know, it has been quite redundant as a mm. as an idea actually but there you go mate i love that you've got it you've got it targeted down to 2016 this is where it all stopped this, this is where this is where we should have stopped and i'm showing my <laughs> remainder colors there a little bit aren't i i mean I, I didn't either that or it's just the fact that i can't you know i'm not up in time before the 12 o'clock deadline to actually do anything about april 1st could be that <laughs> i don't know I, that's the first time i knew that there was a 12 o'clock deadline was this year I had no idea that there was actually a deadline on the April Fools. You could only do, or maybe it just becomes a bit tiresome after midday if everyone's doing it. So that's they put. An, I did, has there always been a time limit? Uh, yeah, it is tradition apparently. It, but again, you know, I'd argue that it's April Fool's Day every day on Twitter. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. So should so we dig Twitter? in? <laughs> yes. Should we dig in? What have we got this week? Well, because I, I've been busy with Eastering. With what have East, you been Eastering, I like the verbiage there. 
Um, yeah, it's, um, I mean, essentially, I was looking at what was happening, and a lot, obviously, around the race report, mm -hmm. and quite a lot of the tweets I picked up on were uh, very good referrals for things to read in long form, uh, and I thought, well, that slightly undermines having a show about Twitter, doesn't it? Let's, let's, <laughs> let's actually get some self-contained tweets that will explain, will help explain this. And I thought I'd try, we'd sort of kick off with a couple of um, uh, videos from comedians who've have done a great job in sort of condensing it from their particular view of it. But it's a good intro. So if we go to the magical likes column and we can start with uh, Munya Chihuahua and uh, I hope I've, uh, I've uh, expressed the correct pronunciation on that, but let's, let's watch. It's a, great, it's a great video. Let me just put that on. <laughs> that is good. Nice. Tim's going to be here shortly. Oh, loving the fro. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thought I'd try an afro. Oh, very Pimlico Academy. <laughs> Morning, guys. Morning. Morning, my slime. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I was off sick yesterday, but um, how's the race report going? Uh, yeah, good. We've been having a bit of a brainstorm. A bame storm. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. Uh, and we've decided to be more inclusive by renaming Big Ben Tall Tunde. <laughs> April, April Fools! <laughs> No, but seriously, we know there's a problem with diversity in British media. Word. So, we're turning Mr. Bean into Mr. Beanie Man. What? April Fool's! <laughs> Again. Uh, no, but we've done the report and we found that there is no evidence for institutional racism in Britain. Uh, <laughs> April Fool's! Yeah, that, that one is true. Yeah, that, that is... Uh... <laughs> Nice. There we have it. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I mean, what were your what, what was your kind of um, reaction? Mm. I I, lo I I love. I, do you know? I I just, I just love everyone who's doing a bit of content during this time anyway, and that was nicely edited. Um, haven't come across this comedian, and I'm definitely going to look out for them in the future. But kind of really hits hits the nail on the head. It's as you just said this week. Um, what is April for? What's real? Um, the, the the whole government race report is. I mean, I, I, I'm still waiting for, you said there was a midday, definitely a midday cutoff, right? Mm -hmm. There was definitely a midday cutoff. Um, <laughs> midday on the first, though, yeah. I, the, <laughs> still waiting for first. midday tomorrow. <laughs> maybe, they, they, maybe they think it's extended to the 31st. Yeah. Um, well, okay, I, I, I like that video, and I think it kind of captures, as a person of colour, for me, yes, how we all sort of reacted. Um but what else have we got? So we can do like a maybe yeah, um, narrative thing and, you know, just... So, well, I mean, Rosie Holt, um, is, she's encapsulated quite a few things. I mean, uh, in here, uh, in her sort of character video. So let, this kind of covers a few things and then we'll go to kind yeah, of... I like this character that she does with her. Yeah, yeah. She's, it's very good. So we'll, we'll, we'll take a listen to that and then we'll cover a kind of a few sort of comments from the other side. Because this has obviously ended up being, you know, very divisive. Um, I mean, you know, one thing that I read uh, about it was that there was the 800 word summary of the report that came out as obviously the one that sort of made all the headlines. But what's yeah. actually then happened <clears throat> is the content, the substantive content of the report has been sort of slightly jettisoned. Uh, I mean, uh, not everyone has obviously read the report, um, but the headlines have been grabbed by this 800 word briefing and they have slightly skewed what's actually been said in the report so no one's come out of this uh very well people yeah. have sort of disowned their sort of uh involvement on the report which we'll get to that later let's uh let's get to this uh video of rosie because she does cover an awful lot of ground on this and we we are a model for other white majority countries a model Take that, America. Do we have black men dying in police custody? Sometimes. When summing up a report looking at our failings, or as I like to call them, our anomalies, let's look elsewhere. Like any good model, it's less about what you wear and more about how you wear it. And with Boris in charge, we can wear our racial baggage with a smile on our face and a funny un-PC joke or two. This isn't on us anymore, B-A-N-E, people. Oh wait, we don't use that term anymore. You lot. The report says some communities continue to be haunted by historic racism, like the Afro-Caribbean community haunted by the distant events of being accidentally deported in 2018. You lot, 
It's creating mistrust. Just let it go. And by it, I do mean the compensation money you're still waiting for. Oh, black people are nine times more likely to be stopped and searched. <clears throat> <laughs> no, sorry. Those are isolated incidences that happen a lot mm -hmm. within a system. When someone is involved in a report like this, it's very important they go into it with strong views already so they can give it a good beginning, middle and end and the critics aren't confused by the tone. Tony Sewell poo-pooed institutional racism for years, blamed poor parenting and absent fathers. Reminds me of my dear nanny Pat. And Minura Mirza wrote for my friends at Spiked magazine in 2017, The Myth of Institutional Racism, which I assume was an early draft of the report. So maybe now we can stop decolonizing history and go back to colonizing it? The Caribbean experience is a fun, jolly label and a good place to start. Now, slavery was sad. No one's denying that. We've all read the Telegraph review of 12 Years a Slave. But as the report shows, at least it was character building. You're welcome. <clears throat> so the sign of good comedy is that, you know, it can also be quite uncomfortable as well. <laughs> I think. I mean, yeah, I yeah. I mean, obviously, um, that's kind of, I think, really um, lampooning <laughs> the various white sensibilities that you know, kind of uh, you know we were talking about just before the show started, um, and people who don't get it. Um, it. It's a really frustrating thing for a person of color to be told that you might. She's basically, you know, and I mean, I'm interested to see some of the comments here who don't actually understand that this is her doing the character, not her, it's not a real person <laughs> as well. There's only sort of, sort of things I don't know. I mean, I'm going to start with what you think, and I think because I I know where I'm coming from on this, but it's it's is it a black and white thing? I don't know. So it, for me, this is really frustrating. Not just what she was saying, but obviously that's that's a character. Let's take that aside. Um, yeah, because you mentioned that the report, people haven't read the report and they're, they're saying stuff about it. But if you if you try and deny that there is racism happening at, in any organisation when people are saying, mm -hmm. yes, there is, mm -hmm. this is what my experience has been or this is what's happened, then it, it really, it's, it really dehumanises the person or the people who are saying, look, time and time again, we've not been heard. And now this, you've got this official report, this official thing that is denying our story, denying our experience. That for a person of colour is the most frustrating thing because for other people, yes, it might be, oh my God, they're not going to go on about slavery again. They're not going to go on about colonisation. They're not going to go about blah, 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 right? It's There's a reason why that's brought up a lot that that history you know our history people of color's history is really important in defining who we've become or who we are today and it feels like we have not moved forward sometimes i mean i arrived in this country you know very young um back in the day when when things were really really bad that sort of formed partly of who i am but you know things have moved on and and i'm i was i was really shocked my son who's an actor who, who did a radio show to find out that he was going through the similar things that he never told me about and i heard to hear it on air and and so have we really moved on and and so this is a really emotive thing for me personally um i know we've got like two great guests next week who might pick this up and bring a different angle for it um but yeah and in fact you just seen david lammy he, he commented on something as well on this um but yeah i i i, and I, I want to hear as you as my colleague as my friend the other side <laughs> of this, I suppose. Okay, well, and that's a completely fair question. I mean, uh, I finding I find it sort of, I find myself worrying whether we're ever going to have a constructive dialogue on on race. And this report has certainly, um, it, what it has done, I suppose, is opened up an awful lot of uh, sort of philosophical discussion. So you said you mentioned two things there so lived experience is one of them and there's a column mm. in the times from uh, sunday times i think it was from matthew syed about uh, lived experience versus the role of reports like this to uh, collate information and to to present it now <clears throat> there's no there's no doubt that another report could have come to 
entirely different uh, conclusions. Reports are not infallible by any any way. So there's a tension there between uh, there's a tension there between lived experience and a kind of evidence gathering and statistical number crunching approach. But I personally, uh, you know, if somebody were to deny my lived experience of a particular issue um you know which obviously hasn't happened on a, a race sense but it certainly happened on other issues then i i would feel extremely uh, frustrated and i think that you know we know that anecdotally you know whether there's an awful lot of evidence um that's been gathered and there's obviously some conjecture as to whether that's been truly sort of taken into account it's it's true that um that uh, it's Tony Sewell who, who did the report, as Rosie alludes to, already had an idea of what he thought, whether the structural racism was an issue or not. Um, but there were other people, obviously, on that report. I mean, I just want to pick up, uh, there's two things it dovetails into <clears> quite nicely. One of them is uh, Trevor Phillips, so former head of the Commission for Racial Equality. Um, he wrote a piece in the Times, there's been a lot of pieces in the Times about this, as they have in many other papers, but... Um, he wrote one today saying that what's happened with this report is that it's been put into the sort of the media sphere and it's it's seen a lot of uh, sort of black commentators dis disagreeing with each other with what he's saying is that basically the kind of white establishment has pulled back and let people tear lumps out of each other. I mean, that's almost a direct quote from what he said in the in the piece. So it's quite an interesting angle. But here he's replying... Uh, about the sort of integrity of the report um, to uh, a comment. Uh, so Trevor, as usual, has taken positions that no single minority academic journalist agrees with. Well, that's that's not that's <clears> not <throat> the case. Uh, I mean, one thing that should be said at this point is that we now have an awful lot more of diversity of opinion. You know, we've got commentators like Mercy Maroki, um, we've got uh, Nana Akua. Uh, there's all sorts of people that I see on quite a regular, or we read or watch on a regular basis that have taken. But that doesn't tell the story either. You know, that's my, my issue with that is like, okay, so we've got issues, so let's just stick a person of color into this job. And I, I you know, I'm going to speak about Pretty Patel. She doesn't represent the Asian experience, from, you know, she doesn't talk for me, but I also think she's damaged. I mean, she won't be aware of this. I, I'm just feeling that, you know, there's some, some things of hers that I recognise. She's damaged by um, her, her upbringing, perhaps. And in, in a, you know, she's, she, I think she's used as a pawn by, by the Tories. Um, again, well, I don't know if I she's mean, she is a Tory, though. I don't know if she's used. Yeah, she's a Tory, but she's, she, you know, she's used as a pawn. Like, the, let's, let's put a brown person in, but that in is, the room. Is that, you're, you're denying, you're, by saying that, I think you're denying her her own self-determination. Self I mean, just, yeah, okay, yeah, she might know. just be just a generally unpleasant person. But what I'm saying is, there's also people of color, and I've been in that situation where I've had to look through a white gaze, and I've, I've, you know, um, to kind of be as middle class and you know well spoken and be as British as I possibly can be to fit in, and then actually having the realization that it doesn't matter what I do, it, I'm always going to be seen, I'm always going to be othered, I'm always going to be different, and so <clears throat> you know, I my my own thing I've had to work on is having this you know if you've done anything on the female gaze is just having this white gaze and seeing myself as what but being as nice a package as possible to to people around me white people around me to sort of you know not to stick out to not be different of course it's great because I've, I've embraced all those things now and they can put it into my work and that's fantastic um but i don't think the answer is when and this i think this people need your direction it's like oh we've got this issue that we need more diversity yes we do we do but you know, that, that diversity doesn't also then speak for a whole community. They don't speak, you know, Pretty Patel doesn't speak for all Asian people or all immigrants or all women. She doesn't speak I don't think she she pretend, for herself. To be fair, I don't think that she would pretend to, but she does speak for, um, and, you know, quite a large number of Tory voters that voted for her. I mean, they, not all of them. That her values are not going to chime with, uh, with, a, with all Tories, but it certainly what she will what she does or her policies will not necessarily be disapproved of so for example take the policing bill that's going to be uh, you know that has been panned across the political spectrum but there will still be a large section of the public who you know think that tougher measures are, are required i mean i think you know noisy protests is the stuff about that is, is crazy but you know it's mm. it's picking on 
So individuals, I mean, one of the problems with this, and, and I'm aware that this might become a sort of special, it, I can't believe it's 10-2 already, but, um, the race special. It was, you know, inevitable, <laughs> you know, the, the Tony Sewell was attacked by, uh, you know, a couple of people using very unhelpful Im imagery, um, you know, one mentioning Goebbels and um, Clive Lewis put something up about the Ku Klux Klan and all the rest of it. So there's been a real bum fight over this and it's not been particularly pleasant and helpful. I don't know whether it's one of those things that if we come out the other end, we'll be better for it, but... Well, we know, there's, there's you know, hope springs eternal. The problem is, um, long on the tooth, and, and, and the things always seem a little bit promising and then they, then nothing ever happens. And I, I mean, yeah, it's the tangible. Like, the tangibles it's a are very important. Conversation for me to have. It's a really difficult mm. conversation for me to have because I'm always expected to kind of encompass, you know, as a person of colour, everything what everyone's feeling. I'm angry. I'm, you know, honestly, I'm angry. I'm fucking livid, actually, about things that are happening, um, real things that affect real people. And for me, I think, you know. If people are just going to talk about it, that's not going to resolve racism. It's, it, it seems really simplistic, like just not being racist. I don't think it is. It's just accepting that certain things might affect, like just dismissing lived experience, for example. I think that's really important. I, I did um, you know, a talk amongst other things. I do you know, talk, talk for a university, a bunch of um, about 80 humanitarian um, lecturers. And, you know, they're talking about, like, how can we reach, you know, uh, people of colour uh, and make them do as well academically as white people. And and it's just, it's all statistics. It's all statistics. It's like, you know, box ticking, the issue why people have, don't call us BAME, is because it's judging us by data, not by lived experience. And I think when you have a lived experience, as you know from my show, Immigrant Diaries, part of that is reclaiming our narrative, reclaiming our stories that, in a way, have been hijacked and made to, made us feel small or um, embarrassed for being the new person in a new country and and i think that's where we, we're going wrong we're looking at is this data data date we're not data we're more than data we're real people we've got you know those lived experiences are relevant they are important and that's historic and that should be listed down as you know yes you can get the data afterwards but you do need to hear what people are saying and i kind of get sucked up into these conversations but it's so difficult for me to relay, look, this isn't just this happening right now. There is a history of stuff I have to deal with every single day as a person of colour, little microaggressions, and even over Zoom, over, you know, um, social media, lockdown has been a bit easier. So I think you're right. This has become the race kind of um, episode. We should probably do something a little bit more. I know what other, other things well, I'll tell you what we can do. What we can do. Mean, obviously, what we can say to to anyone watching, uh, apart from obviously, do tweet at us at LKT Zoom. Um, you can always obviously check our timeline out. I've put in the like section everything we discuss in each week. So there's all the videos that we've we've watched. There's the comment there from uh, there's the Matthew Syed article from uh, the Times about lived experience. There's also Aisha Hazarika, former guest. Uh, uh, you know, drawing attention to a discussion that was had on the, her show, on her breakfast show. Um, I mean, it is interesting because Lord, Lord Simon Woolley, who founded Operation Black Vote, he does at least say in that program that you know that when we he's having conversations uh, with white people about race, they are starting from a much higher base than they were, you know, say ten years ago. So there is mm -hmm. there was some, you know, there was some hope into what he said. Ian Dell, also a former guest on, on here, sort of laying into the left, using this as a kind of battering ram, essentially. Now, let's, let's, um, let's do, there's a couple of ways we could go uh, on here. In fact, actually, let's just have a little shout out. Well, Anand, who just liked our tweet, is basically drawing attention to a piece um, by Sundar Katwala in The Independent. So all of these things you can, you can sort of look through. There's also a really fantastic uh, video from Matt Green about uh, government inquiries. So check that out because that is that is a great fun done in the style of an advert. Um, we may not have time to play it now, so please check that out. I think what I should. I love his lockdown hair as well. But <laughs> yes, <laughs> what I should try. Oh, there you go. Hello, Matt. He's just liked his tweet. Um, we might play oh, out. Well, like might, one. might play out with that one. Well, I was thinking, well, actually, that's a Richard Osman tweet, but I was I was thinking that with a Richard Osman tweet, I might go for the 
one I spotted yesterday afternoon, or I think it was, uh, out for a walk in the sun, and he's saying, just just listening to The Best Jewel Thief in the World by Prefab Spout, is there a better English, a British songwriter and lyricist than Paddy McAloon? And um, Prefab Spout were from uh, Newcastle, from somewhere in the North East, actually. I, I, well, I wasn't sure, I thought they were Irish, but I think they're actually from uh, like Newcastle or something. But I, I have to say, when I listen to Prefab Spout, I am always like, wow, it's just incredible. So something like Life of Surprises and The Sound of Crying, I mean, they are just impeccable. But obviously, quite a lot of you know response to that, a lot of people wading in for um, Elvis Costello. Um, there were- Oh, Elvis Costello, my God. What's, what's good come of this, Elvis Costello? Uh... And pretty well, that's about, of course, love, when love breaks down. I think you know what it is when you listen to the first time around. There's probably show in, in the, a whole show in this. We, you, you, you know, you hear a song, but you don't really hear the lyrics unless you bought Smash It. But you know, <laughs> you know you yes, smash it. I totally yeah, bought so Smash It. They weren't lyrics, but when you read them back, you think, oh my god, they were profound lyrics. They were really banging. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. That, uh, I, well, I, so he had quite a lot of feedback, and they had uh, the Colin, both Collins and McCauley. So that's Andrew Collins, Stuart McCauley, rooting for. Prefab spell. But I did pick up um, a slightly sour note, and I do know that men go a little bit over bewildering musical appreciation, and, and I did point out that Kate Bush should have been in the mix. Oh, yes. But Twitter Legend. account... Well, yeah, exactly. Twitter account, the, the Karen and the... Was it the Karen and the Winter Soldier? Uh, men are so ridiculous. Set an arbitrary barrier. Judge anyone who doesn't cross it, because music is a test of character, not just a lovely thing. It's like, oh, you're really poo-pooing the party there. It's like, can't we just have a little bit of comparative fun, please? Is she like doing the Karen like a Karen? You know, I think that's Karen. Yeah, I think she's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, um, the thing is, you know, <laughs> I I think we've grown out of that stage where music was you judge someone for their music. I just remember telling you know if you met a guy and 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 he said, what were you into? And this wanting to get the music right so that we could bond and connect but i'm beyond that like back in the day nobody liked wham nobody liked abba what, yeah but back in the day nobody liked wham what, what? nobody liked what well, well, it wasn't cool to like wham but they still but top the charts though they stopped the charts but it wasn't cool if you were the cool kids it wasn't cool to like wham and i that loved wham even back in the you know the the wham rap oh. i knew it all by heart i loved it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm yeah. guilty i'm also guilty of that yeah Oh dear. Um, it was, so that was a nice. It was a nice sort of kick off there, but it was nice to see Prefab Sprout getting the recognition they deserve. I thought. Um, so should we play out on Matt Green's video? I think that might be. Yes. Only, having mentioned it, I feel like it's only fair. I want to see. I want to see his 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 afros. Uh, lockdown afros nearly as. Oh no, it's not quite as big as my son. He's he's had it a year and a bit. Yeah, this is great. So well, before we do this, um, thanks everyone. I cannot believe that half an hour has just no. totally flown by. Uh, a really interesting discussion. I hope those of you that saw it out there will come to our main show, which is next week, Sunday the 11th of April, 8pm, with comedians Alex Keeley and Anna Morris. You can go to Eventbrite, look up Let's Kill Twitter, and you'll be able to book through there. That means you can come into the Zoom room with us and engage. You can watch it on the streams, of course. But if you come into the Zoom room, you can share your tweets, ask questions, and so on and so forth. There'll be lots of details zipping up um, on our ticker feed uh, above us as well. Please do follow us at LKT Zoom. Um, that's that's all from me. So, Gila, would you like to say goodbye? I, I just want to say, um, I know we've got two guests next week uh, who are going to be maybe pulling some of these apart. But let's be nice out there, guys. Let's be nice to each other. <laughs> Show some love. <laughs> uh, yeah, even though there's no Easter eggs left. God's sake. whole point of leftovers <laughs> is that we can buy them cheaper. I'm just angry about my eggs at the They moment. might be. You never know, Sajid. They might be cheaper tomorrow. If yeah, I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm going to go. I wish you luck on that one. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to leave you with uh, Matt Green's video uh, about government inquiries. And uh, see you soon. Take care. Criticizing you for bad stuff you're doing. Oh, I will just start from the beginning. Are people criticizing you for bad stuff you're doing or letting happen? 
Or bad stuff that happened in the past that you don't want to admit happened? Are you getting questions that you don't know how to answer, or don't want to answer? Are you a government that doesn't want to do anything, but wants to look like you're doing something? The solution's simple. Have an inquiry. Here at inquiriesforyou.com, we can provide you with a few months breathing space, plus a final report that matches your chosen narrative, all for just the price of a small hospital. Our specialised team of highly trained investigators will see exactly what you want them to see, how and when you want them to see it. Is that a culture of bullying? No, it's just robust disagreements with a person in charge who is doing their best. Was that an overreaction? No, it was just a difficult situation for the people in charge who were doing their best. Is that an institutional systemic problem that's built up over years of privilege and prejudice? No. Oh, look over there. Was that a squirrel? I thought I saw something moving. Uh, maybe. Sorry, what were we talking about? Inquiriesforyou.com, where every mistake is honest, every motive unimpeachable, every disaster unforeseeable, and every conclusion vague. Call now on 0800 Whitewash and get that inquiry announced today. Inquiry results not guaranteed, in which case further inquiries may be required. <laughs> I love the line about further inquiries may be required. Um, you can follow Matt, uh, I assume it's Matt Green Comedy. Yeah, at Matt Green Comedy. Um, we should get him on as well. Yes, and we should be definitely getting him on. Good one. I shall write that down on my notepad for afterwards. Uh, thanks again, everyone. Take care. Goodbye.